So, Miss Bertha, when did you move to Cabbage Town? I think it was um, 1982. 1982. Okay. Maybe somewhere around there, give or take a year. It may have been a little bit earlier. So tell me, what, what was your draw to Cabbage Town? What made you want to stay in Cabbage Town? Stay in Cabbage Town? Yeah. When I first came here, I couldn't stand it. Uh, I couldn't stand the South. Mm -hmm. Coming from Philadelphia, New Jersey. So this was a whole different um, atmosphere for me. Mm -hmm. I've been in a military family, mm -hmm. and we had traveled here, there, and everywhere. So I actually came here through my martial arts sensei, and um, he said, I'm leaving Philadelphia. If you want your black belt on the verge or the black belt, he says, you got to come to Georgia. Mm -hmm. So the only reason why I came was to uh, train and receive my black belt. I know you were even in the karate and stuff. Well, right now I'm a fourth degree black. Oh, excuse me, Miss Bertha. So, let me back up a little bit. <laughs> and um, once I was, um, I, I became, I was poor. Okay. I didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. When I got here, didn't have a job. I didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, a friend said, I found a place in Cabbage Town. And that was mm -hmm. on Reinhardt. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, you can stay with me for a while. Mm -hmm. So me and my sensei did. And during that time, uh, uh, Carroll Street, the backyard, and Reinhardt, the backyard, mm -hmm. are back, back to uh -huh. each other. And so when I would go in the backyard, I would just smell this wonderful food all the time. And one day I got up the, the, the nerve to explore and follow this the smell that was wafting under my nose, and I found Littles and uh, Leon's who who owned it, family owned, and uh, I just spoke to him for a while, and he says, "Whatever you need," he said, "You just come to me." He says, "You don't have to pay me. You don't have to have the money." He says, "You know, we'll work it out." So that was like my first introduction uh, to the people of. Mm -hmm. Cabbage Town, and uh, Joyce Brookshire, and um, the patch, you know, things that were going on in the community mm -hmm. with these people mm -hmm. who were um, supportive people, leaders, mm -hmm. uh, people that the community could depend on uh, to always go to Leon's if they didn't have the money to buy something. He would run a tab, you know, things like that. And uh, I would come out of my backyard and I would see this gentleman painting with an easel and everything. And my major was art. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I was interested in that. So finally, I worked up nerve again to approach him and um, ask him, well, what was he doing? How was he doing it? And why was he doing it? You mm -hmm. know, and oh, that's beautiful. Can you teach me that? And he was skeptical. And uh, one day I came over and he uh, set up a still life mm -hmm. for me. And he says, if you could paint this, I'll take you on as my student. So I did. And he took me on as his only student. And later on, he had he had uh, he and his partner had uh, moved. And uh, I said, well, you know, I'm going to have to move from here. And I don't know where I could go. And he says, here. He gave me a set of keys. He says, I have a house on Vereen. He says, go look at it. Tell me what you think about it. And I said, okay. So I got there and I peered in the window like that. And I was like, huh, you know, and I'm like a backyard, like, oh my goodness, you know. So uh, he said, what do you think? I'm like, I'm loving it. And he says, um, how much can you afford for rent? I'm like, uh, like, 225. I had just started working as an aerobic instructor mm -hmm. at an athletic club on Peachtree. And he says, Well, you know what? A prostitute gets paid more than that. And I'm like, Well, I guess I'm just out of that picture, you know. Then the next thing you know, he gave me the keys and he says, Here, 
you know. So I managed to get up two fifty a month, and um, he wanted to quick claim the house to me. Mm -hmm. I w did not know what that term was, what it meant. Mm -hmm. I couldn't seem to find anyone to explain it to me, and I just procrastinated mm -hmm. on that. Then the next thing I knew, someone come knocking at my door saying, I just bought the house from under you. So they let me live there for a year mm -hmm. paying rent mm -hmm. and then i bought the house Back. from them that's right so and i just paid off the house this february oh wow february. So that makes me feel really good and it hasn't uh been an easy deal mm -hmm. because it was a red line in cabbage town and i was on the negative side mm -hmm. of that red line mm -hmm. and being black and being a woman mm -hmm. and being poor mm -hmm. it was hellacious just trying to uh to get the house mm -hmm. and to maintain the house mm -hmm. to keep it mm -hmm. to pay the property taxes to mm -hmm. pay the insurance and stuff like that mm -hmm. it wasn't an easy task but um god has been with me every step of the way he sure has and i have learned some truly truly big lessons um i've learned about myself no man will do what he can do unless he is given more to do than what he can do. So I didn't think I could do it, but I was given more to do than what I thought I could do. And each time I managed to accomplish it and keep going. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. to, the, to the point now, excuse me, that I could say, I paid for it. That's it's, right. It's That's done, right. You know, blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. You know, a lot of tears, mm -hmm. a lot of. I can't make it this month, you know, can you help yeah. me, you know, and God had put people in my life. I was just about to say that. I love to hear your stories about these different people who have come into your life. It's almost like a little movie. It could be a great movie. Um, um, I remember you telling me there was a picture in your bedroom. I said, who is that? And you said, that's me. And you were, I think you were modeling. Weren't you a model in Atlanta? No. Well, tell, tell me about that. Tell me about your modeling days. Uh, well, Chicago, I actually started by working at Neiman Marcus. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, designers would come in, mm -hmm. Yves Saint Laurent, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, wow. And um, I said I wanted to model. And uh, Yves Saint Laurent said, okay, mm -hmm. I'll give you this to wear. Mm -hmm. And uh, I walked down the runway and I tripped. I was so embarrassed, mm -hmm. but they asked me to do it again. And then I was in commercials about hair and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's how the modeling came about. Got started, okay. yes. Okay. And um, uh, just taking the pictures and being in newspapers, being in magazines and things like that. So. That is awesome. You are just, they always say, uh, what's the, what's the phrase? It's, um, a, a man of all trades or like, they always, they don't never say, trades. they'll never say a Jill of all trades. Cause you, <laughs> when I think about you, I say that lady can do everything. She sews, she can, she can draw, she can do everything, you know? And I think that's awesome to see for me to see someone, um, who's older than me, who is able to still be an artist, still live at her own pace and her own rhythm and, be able to tell me about uh, the man who was the mason and built your pond. And I didn't even know about the koi pond until after I got the mural project. Okay. Like the koi fish were in there for other reasons. And I found out you had a koi pond in your backyard that was built. I said, this is God. This is so, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that relationship too, because that was awesome. With David there? Yes. Uh, David came, I think, maybe a year after I did. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, he and his partner, Richard, we just connected. Mm -hmm. And they were very eclectic yes. people. They just weren't your run-of-the-mill, mm -hmm. normal people. They were really interesting, mm -hmm. you know. And I liked that. They had a, a lot of energy mm -hmm. about them. And um, they were both... Uh, different mm -hmm. but at the same time they were the same mm -hmm. as being artistic yes. you know and yeah. what they wanted to do and what they wanted to share mm -hmm. and after that we just been friends until the day they died mm -hmm. so uh 
he was really good. He was really good. He was a strange person, sometimes a difficult person, mm -hmm. but that was the both of them, mm -hmm. you know, and they made themselves known. Right, right. And I'm I'm just so honored to um to have you on the mural and to have met someone like you and um I hope that you are honored by being up on the wall and people knowing you might be a little weird. They probably like, isn't it late from the wall? <laughs> I, I, I am honored. A little perplexed, but I am honored. Perplexed. You know, um, like, oh, why am I up here? <laughs> I, it, 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 it is an honor. Yes, it should know? be. And I know that there are so many other people there are here in Cabbage mm -hmm. Towns that could be up on that wall mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And for you to um, have heard my story or whatever led you mm -hmm. to have this interest in me, mm -hmm. you know, I do appreciate, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know how to, um, like, really show mm -hmm. the appreciation. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, feel, I feel the appreciation, you know. But I feel that it's from the, the community. Yes. You know. Yeah. And if I've been chose to represent the community... I want to do a darn good job. That's right. That's it, right. You know. That's and, right. Um, and not be boisterous. Yeah. About it. Yeah. Uh, but there, oh, there's been times when I said, "Oh, if you go down Crog Street, you'll see me." <laughs> <laughs> and one guy he came up to me. He was uh, giving me mail that was in the wrong mailbox, mm -hmm. and he, he says, "I see you every day when I go to work." Okay. <laughs> And then he says, the wall. And I'm like, oh. And then I think that was the first time that I realized how many people see, you. see mm -hmm. the mural, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I'm, I'm trying to live up to the worthiness yeah. of that. Just be you. We love you just the way you are. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I know that when I first met you, you and your mother were making buttons for the community. Can mm -hmm. you tell, tell me about the buttons you were making? Uh, the buttons, what were they for? I think Cabbage Strong mm -hmm. buttons, and we were making masks mm -hmm. at the same time. And my mother's a quilter. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, uh, when I started to do the mask thing, my machines broke down. Mm -hmm. So I asked my mom if I could use her stuff, and uh, which she did graciously. And uh, she gave me tips, and she helped me. Mm -hmm. And uh, for her to be uh, 60, 80, 86 years old, you know, and here I am, almost 70, it's like it has taken me this long to really appreciate mm -hmm. what she has. Always loved her, always will. But as you grow up, you go through your, your phases, phases yeah. and everything, mm -hmm. and some things you just don't see mm -hmm. and um now i'm starting to see uh all the things that my come full circle has mm -hmm. put forth mm -hmm. and where some of my passion may come from you know mm -hmm. and i'm like oh i can never be that good you know i can never do that and she's like you can do whatever you want to do you just have to put that effort and that time into it to learn how to do it and do it correctly. Mm -hmm. If you have to take it out 10 times, then you take it out 10 times. Because mm -hmm. that 11th time is going to come out the way the that way you, you want it. Right. Yeah. So I, I've gone, you know, through. And I dips. think after talking with Jake about the seamstress, the black seamstress that were in the factory here in Cabbage Town, it really made me think about a Facebook post I saw of you and your mother in front of a sewing machine. I said, this is just full circle. You know, you have these women who are known to be awesome seamstress here, and here they are right here helping Cabbage Town again. So everything is full circle. I'm starting to learn, you know, you never know how things come back around, you true, know? True, So as an artist, I really enjoy to find connection and um, story. I kind of use my, I call my murals tapestry murals because tapestries tell stories. And when I interview people, I'm getting the research for my story. So I'm going to connect these things together and I'm going to find like little things about these people who are similar or they're similar uh, motifs that are going on. So with the sewing, I saw this before I even knew you, I saw on a Facebook post you had and it was you and your mom 
sewing in front of a sewing machine and you were showing how you were making, I think you're making the mask mm -hmm. at that time. I said, look at this, this is awesome because I just spoken to Jake about these black women who are so good at the Fulton uh, mill, cotton mill, they actually made and sewed the, the bags and they were on that floor. They were, you know, segregated. So they, they were the, the seamstresses. And at the time there was a strike um, at the cotton mill and they were um, not able to keep working there um, just because it was causing too much friction within the community at that time. But I said, man, look at this. And here you are, you have two black women here in 2021 using their seams seamstress skills to affect and influence, you know, how people are being safe in the community again. So even though it's a small gesture, it's really big to me because I feel like those are the small gestures that are big that need to be seen and heard about. Most people probably don't even know about these awesome seamstresses that were in the cotton mill um, because they weren't there long. Mm -hmm. I thought that was great to see the the uh, parallels between now and then. And Cambridge Town itself is full of talented people. That's right. In every area. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of our neighbors from the stack, she had made a mask. Mm -hmm. To, she just couldn't make masks anymore. Mm -hmm. So she gave away what she had left over as far as her fabric, the elastic and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I was able to be the recipient of that. Okay. So okay. I have those materials mm -hmm. and I've made some masks from that. Mm -hmm. But there are so many um, people that are low key. Yes. That are doing their yes. thing. Yeah. You know. Because at first I was saying, I wish there weren't so many trees in front of the mural so people can see her. But then I said to myself, no, it's just enough so that people have to wonder, like, who's behind there? And that's why I think about Cabbage Town. It's a very, it's almost kind of hidden, but not, you know. So when you get close, you're like, oh, wow, that's cool, you know, or that's interesting. And I feel that vibe in Cabbage Town. Everybody has their own unique kind of talent. It's, it's like a town, little town. Little town, that's right. And when I would go to work and I worked at the Omni and I didn't have a vehicle mm -hmm. and my uh, um, my co-workers would bring me home, mm -hmm. they would be shocked once they turned off a boulevard and a memorial mm -hmm. and came into Cabbage Town. They were like, ah, I didn't know this was here. And it seemed like the whole atmosphere Changes. has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you come into Cabbage Town and it wasn't that hustle and bustle anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you would see uh, ladies walking down the street with their bathrobes on and curlers in their hair, mm -hmm. walking the kids to the bus stop, mm -hmm. you know, uh, knocking on my door saying, Bertha, you want to go to the yard sale? I'm like, I got to get dressed. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> and I mean, it was just so comfortable to to be in a community Mm -hmm. Like that, mm -hmm. you know, where you didn't have to pretend. Pretend, you right? No, you didn't. Have it wasn't to get, pretentious, right? You didn't have to get dressed up mm -hmm. or anything like that, you know. And whatever you needed, if they could help you with mm -hmm. it, they would. Mm -hmm. um, there was one time we were talking about at the community center on uh, Carroll Street, and at that time, I believe it was the Salvation army mm -hmm. where we had the the meetings at and um, I wanted to say something so bad because Cabbage Town was changing so much mm -hmm. and the Cabbage Town people that came into the meetings mm -hmm. they were saying like we really don't want this you know we don't want you you know and I had to like speak up and had to stand up and my knees were like jelly I'm like mm -hmm. what can I do what mm -hmm. can I say to say, I'm not a threat. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to take anything from you. I just want to be part of the community, mm -hmm. of the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and help in whatever way I could, you know. And um, I was proud that I was able to stand up and stay standing. I didn't know you were standing on, up doing that. <laughs> you didn't tell me that on, part. On my own. Yes. You know? And I said what I had to say. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we were like neighbors, I mean, like true neighbors, you mm -hmm. know. I understood where they were coming from mm -hmm. and what they were saying about the new influx of people. Mm -hmm. And they understood what I was saying that 
I like this community. I have made this community my home, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to let anyone chase me away. Mm -hmm. And being from a military family and living on bases, mm -hmm. you live beside a person that you had no choice of living beside, and everything worked out just fine. Mm -hmm. So I was determined that this is where I wanted to be, this is where God put me, and I wasn't going to let anyone chase me out. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I realized being part of the neighborhood, I had to support the neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, the best that I could. And with that, teaching the martial arts to the children oh, okay, and self-defense mm -hmm. to the women. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of um, uh, flashback on that. But next thing I know, the parents were giving their kids, here's a pair of slippers for Miss Bertha for for Christmas. You give these to her, you know, because they didn't want to speak to me. They didn't care about me teaching their kids anything, but they knew that I was a neighbor. And you were part of the community. And they took care of me. They didn't have to say hello on a daily basis every time they saw me, but they knew that I was a neighbor and they were going to watch my back. And that gives me a little hope because I, I see us segregating even more and more now, not just by race, but by class, by income, by mm -hmm. so many different things. And when I hear that story, it makes me say, we have got to get it together because that's the real community. When you're able to sit by somebody who's completely different than you, live by somebody who's completely different than you, and still have that empathy and care and concern for them. So also, one thing that really struck me about you, and I have, I've struggled with this thing since I was, when I was younger, I saw more mixed friends. You know, when the younger you are, if you go to an elementary school, you go to the playground, you see everybody playing, or you go to the cafeteria, everybody's, you know, they eating lunch. Then the older you get, the more separated we get as friends. And um, one of the things that struck out about you was your friendship with Rose Barron. Because I said, you don't see enough um, mixed friendships as people get older. Their crowd, their, their circles become more and more closed in, whether they know it or not. They become more and more in their own bubble. So how did y'all meet? And how did this friendship come to be? Well, we actually met um, through David and Richard mm -hmm. on Powell Street. Uh, they would love to give parties, mm -hmm. gatherings, and they, they knew so many different people mm -hmm. and Rose was just one of the people that were there mm -hmm. and uh, we just got to talking and sharing and seeing each other at every party you know and that's how we really got to know each other and then just staying in, in, in contact mm -hmm. with each other. Okay that's awesome and I I think that that is something that um, actually to be honest this mural was based off the the floating part was based off of a series that she has this beautiful of these mermaids that she creates in her in her uh, portraiture mm -hmm. her ph photography and they're floating in the water and they're just so peaceful and the gowns are like floating in the water and I was like wow that is just so awesome 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 so that's actually how I got the pose and also the story behind it. Well, I saw some pictures of y'all having fun, drinking or something, that, you know, <laughs> having a good time. I said, man, that's good. I like that. I wish I could see more of that. And she was actually the one who called me to let me know that you were going to call me. Yep, because so. I knew her a little bit from an artist residency thing we did that taught you how to do community art. Mm -hmm. And that's how I found out. Okay. Yep, that's how I found out. So this has been an awesome experience. Um, I thank you for allowing me in your home and seeing all of the great memories on your walls and even just some of the memories that you have shared with me, they're still in my head. Like I think to myself, if Miss Bertha can redo her bathroom, I can too. <laughs> and if Miss Mer Bertha can do all this with this kitchen, I can do mine too. And if my house is cold tonight, it's okay. It's an old house. We're going to get through it and it's still going to be cute. And it's going to be mm -hmm. ours, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's the mindset I've put forth, you know, knowing that you bought that house on your own, just like me, and I'm able to, you know, that was a great uh, well, I do have thing to for me to see. <laughs> it was my mom. Like I said, I was poor. Mm -hmm. I had nothing. <laughs> and when this house was offered to me, 
I had to come up with three thousand mm-hmm. dollars that I just did not have. Mm-hmm. It, it looked like it was impossible, mm-hmm. and my mother gave was the, 3, the one that came Aww. to my rescue. So she gave, she, she planted that seed, the seed, and I'm happy to say that it has flowered. So, last question is: How? Um, what would you tell? The people who are coming to Cabbage Town now, what is one thing that you think you could tell anybody who's coming to Cabbage Town, they're old, new, whatever, what is something that you want Cabbage Town to know? I know it's a very broad question. (laughs) Yes, because um, when I first moved in, how eclectic uh, Cabbage Town was. Mm -hmm and how comfortable people felt and how energized people were to fix up um, homes that were houses that were dilapidated Mm -hmm. and to see that change and then also you saw the people change Mm -hmm. like every 10 years i've seen a big change Mm -hmm. in people and people have said oh i come to cabbage town because i just love it i love the flavor i love the taste of it and everything but then i have found out that people come because they love it but then they want to change this and they want to change that and cabbage town is not quite the same Mm -hmm. as it was when i came here almost 40 years ago Mm -hmm. so it has changed and the people have changed as well and it's the community is just a little bit different you Mm -hmm. have another generation here uh the people aren't as older as they were when i first Mm -hmm. came in and generations lived in one household you know that has changed Uh, you could drive down the street and you could park anywhere you wanted to park now you have to park two blocks over Mm -hmm. because every house has if not one, two, or maybe three vehicles in it. So just the the look of the neighborhood has changed, mm-hmm. and it's changed in a good way. But with that, you you have to accept other things. What you've been used to goes away, mm-hmm. and then it's a new day. Mm-hmm. So I'm still trying to adjust. Mm-hmm. So I really don't know what to tell people moving into Cabbage Town because it's not the way that it was when I came here Mm -hmm. or how I still would like to see it. Mm -hmm. Um, People will walk down the street, hey, Miss Bertha, hey, you know, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I speak to people walking down the street and they'll keep walking, whether they have ear pods in or Mm -hmm. not, whether they're looking on their phone or not. And some people I would see on a daily basis and they wouldn't even look up and I'm like, is it me? Is it my color? Do they not see me? You know, I'm, I'm wondering all these mm-hmm, little things. Mm-hmm. And then finally, I would just say hello, just to make sure that they did see me, that they would mm-hmm. have to look up and look at me and acknowledge mm-hmm. me. You know, and um, things, have, things have changed. I remember when people first started to have a kid, they would leave Cabbage Town. Mm-hmm. Now Cabbage Town is full of kids again. Mm-hmm. You know, I know so, you like that. So it goes, so, you know, yeah. up and up and down. Yeah. But um, society has changed. Mm-hmm. You know, history has changed, mm-hmm. and um, history is back here now, making room for the new mm-hmm. stuff that's coming up. So I really can't say that I have any advice or that I could say anything right you know right. i'm just like sitting back on my porch watching the world go by you know mm-hmm. watching the change being a witness mm-hmm. to it all you know okay so maybe just smile or speak to each other or you know mm-hmm. some of the basic things i think i'm learning the smallest things go further than the things that we think we have to implement to make community but you i know. know if you keep it up to the point where you get on their nerves then they come by, they say hi first. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to say it. You know, and that's so good. It's been, that's good. It's, it's been good. Um, I grew up here mm-hmm. in Cabbage Town. So this has been my, my, my growing up 
era, mm -hmm. you know, right here in Cabbage Town. You know, when I came here, I was 32 years old. Mm -hmm. Now I'm almost 70. Mm -hmm. So I've matured here. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me and sharing your knowledge and how you come about to do your murals. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. So what's next? <laughs> So right now I am currently working on um, a picture of a young man named Haroon who um, was into some uh, gang activity and kind of some bad things he was doing in his life and he was able to get a chance to turn his life around and he started something called Street Groomers. And basically him, he would get several men in the community to go stand at the bus stops so to make sure the kids were safe um, in the morning because it'd be dark and you don't want them getting caught up in crossfire or anything like that. And he has been a tremendous um, even help for me. He would watch over my girls if I was at work and they wanted to come paint. He'd text me and say, hey, I'm down here at the wall, making sure the girls are OK and take a picture. And, you know, he was just a normal average guy. He wasn't, you know, some educated, wealthy guy. He was just an average person. He walked amongst the community and he knew the community and they knew him and he was seven feet tall, you know, so that helped too. And um, he just is just such a blessing. Um, he was a Muslim and he, um, he practiced his religion, but he also practiced a very open mind and a very you know, just had a really beautiful spirit about him. Um, you don't meet a lot of people like that who walk mm -hmm. through life and are not concerned about how they gonna eat or how they gonna live or how you gonna, how I'm gonna pad my pocket. He wasn't, that was not him. Mm -hmm. You know, he would be out there in the cold trying to make sure the home people had blankets or, you know, he was just always, always going. And um, So he's your next moral? He's my next. He's, I actually started it, but it's been raining like crazy, so I'm hoping it'll kind of ease off a little bit. Okay. And he's my next mural, Street Groomers. And he'll have a Street Groomers hoodie on, and um, the Street Groomers are still going. They're still protecting the neighborhood. They're still teaching. They're still, you know, mentoring and really trying to work the community within the community. You know, sometimes we go outside for resources to help fix things when there's resources right around you. Right. And right. and you would never know where those resources are. That's why I always tell people, don't discount people because that looks like that might be this, but really that person could be the answer to why mm -hmm. or how to fix some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm well, going to miss him. <laughs> well, good luck with that. And I, I know that's going to be a, a beautiful mural yeah. once it's finished and the rain stops. Yes, 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 yes. Well, thank you for having me, Miss Ashley. Well, thank you. This has been an awesome opportunity.
Okay. <laughs> it's so weird when you're talking in front of a light. <laughs> yeah.